only man from the northern province uh, that's doing boxing. Um, what's it like being a, a solo warrior? Hey, man. Hey, then. Thank you for having me. And um, before we even start, uh, you know, I would like to say I appreciate your platform so much, man. And I appreciate um, um, the opportunity that you have given me. And I thank the Lord above, man, for, for people like you that are pushing the work, you know, behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, in events, you know, in tournaments, doing your work. I appreciate that so much. As for me being the only active boxer in the Northern Cape, man, it's a lonely road, man. I've got some, I've got some good brothers um, who have been boxing longer than me, who have achieved many things in amateur, uh, in essay tournaments and all of that. In the, in the essays and all of that. But as a professional, there is no one I look up to or I can look up to in my province as I'm the only active professional boxer right now. It's a lonely road. It's not, it's not a nice feeling. Well, shout out to Mike for putting uh, you in touch with me as well. Um, he reached yeah. out and, you know, asked me to, you know, have a chat with you. And I was more than happy to because, I, you know what, I like a good story as well. I'm a sucker for a good story and you're the only guy there representing and uh, you're about to go down to Cape Town now and represent your province as well. Um, yeah. Fight a man that we've seen on our TVs before. Um, yeah. How do you feel about it? How do I feel about what fighting him? Yep, as an opponent. How do you feel about him as an opponent? As, as an opponent, I think that guy is a good boxer, man. I think um, he's a strong boxer. Uh, you know, he has only lost one fight to, uh, well, what's his name? Gomes, Kidian Gomes. Yeah, so, Kidian Gomes at Emperor Palace, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that, that was a crazy fight. That was a good fight. And uh, we, we respect Gomes so much. So we know he had to put in a good work. And the other opponents he has faced, they are not, they are not, you know, it's just, uh, I think they were building up his record at that time. So... Um, I think he's a good boxer, he's a strong boxer, and um, it's just unfortunate that he's been paired with me, uh, because when it comes to boxing IQ, I think I'm, I'm levels, uh, I know I'm levels uh, above him. So tell us about your training plan, like, I mean, what's, who's your trainer, who's, who, who manages you, who promotes you, like, what, is your, what does your team look like? Yes, my team... My team, my promoter is uh, Mr. Maoko. You know, he has, he's, he's been long in the game. Um, he has won the best promoter of the year award from SA uh, Boxing Awards. And my coach, I've got two coaches, Coach Sinalo, who's based in Jobe, who comes down to Bloemfontein and works with me. He's currently working with um, um, uh, CJ Giwane. They're fighting for a title in Eastern Cape this Sunday. And yeah, um, uh, coach, yeah, uh, coach Springkana also is my coach. He's also working with um, Kulebom Songa, and they go into Namibia the same day. So I think I'll be with Coach Spring uh, Sinalo at um, at Cape Town. Yeah, so me and Springkana go back quite well. Um, you know, I, we always, uh, you know, having a joke and everything like that. And he always comes up. He was based in Johannesburg for a very long time as well as a professional mm -hmm. boxer, not only as a trainer. Um, how do you get on with, uh, with, with the likes of him? Because he's been around the scene for a very long time. There's, there's too much knowledge to, um, to observe from the guy, you know. As a boxer, he was a very successful professional boxer. And as a coach, he just took it to different levels and leveled it up. And um, he, he's a workhorse. I mean, he, he's, his thing is uh, um, cardio and, and um fitness is confidence yeah so he wants his boxers to be fit he wants his boxers to work you know he's a he's a volume um type of um coach he wants volume he wants to see action and um coach sinalo a little bit different a little bit technique a little bit of uh, counter boxing and um also works on the condition so i'm learning a lot from the two guys man because it's up to the the, the boxer how much they want to take from their coach because many boxers uh, focus on the type of style they have and if uh, if they are not careful they don't absorb enough from the coaches because experience does count 
And uh, as as you are a boxer, do you do a lot of research on your opponents, um, or do you or do you perhaps uh, tend to leave that over to your team to do the research? I mean, how do you approach it? Everyone, everyone does research. Everyone, my family, my friends, my team, everyone will be will be googling the name, will be you know checking because you know. Even though I don't come from a boxing um, a, a family background type of a thing, but my 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 family, my friends love boxing. We love watching boxing. So everyone will be giving me tips. For me, um, you know, uh, I I just wanted to see one fight and see um, what type of style he, he he has. You know, because I know styles are not going to change, but they're going to improve. So if he's a he's, if he's a puncher, like I think he is. He's going to try to get in those situations where he's gonna he's gonna push me back and try to hurt me. So that's not gonna change. He's not gonna miraculously become a mover and does all that because, yeah, that's not his style, you know. But we're expecting a better product from what we've seen because with what we've seen, uh, I'm not really impressed, uh, you know. So I'm expecting a, a, a hard a hard fight from him, especially him being at home in Cape Town. Um, I'm expecting him to try to prove some 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 um, them haters wrong because he lost his fight, his last fight against um, Ke uh, Keaton, and he wants to make it up to his promoter and to himself and to his uh, his club for sure. Well, you mentioned that his style won't change. I mean, you've seen him against Keaton. That's probably the fight you've been that you'll be most referring to when you when you say you've done your studying on on him as well. What's your style like? Because, I mean, as you said, you can't really change your style, so you're not exactly giving away too much. What type of a boxer are you? I like it when guys come to me. I mean, if you, if you, uh, if you watch my fight with Keegan and you, and you watch all my fights, I'm, I'm the guy, I like the guy coming forward. I'm a counter boxer, and that's what he's going to get for sure. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I don't need to hide it. I don't need to go around the bush and say, no, I'm coming for him. I want him to come to me. I want him to throw his punches. That's what I need. And that, uh, and I think, you know, it's that situation of um, Canelo and Triple G, where the stars are not going to change. The other boxer is going to come forward. The other boxer is going to look for the opportunity to counter. And that, I think this fight is going to turn out to be like that. Do you anticipate with the, the fight being like you, like you laid it out there, that there will be a stoppage in this fight? Yeah, um, <laughs> look, we know, uh, unfortunately, um, boxing is a, is a, he, he, as much as it's a gentleman's game, it's also a dirty game, you know. The, the home guy will always get the nod from the judges and the referee. So uh, my promoter told me under no circumstances must that fourth, uh, must that fourth uh, bell ring to, to close the fourth round. So there's no way we're waiting for him. Uh, we're going to be satisfied with the point decision. We don't want that. We don't even want to get into that type of mentality. We're hitting hard, we're counting hard, and we're trying to stop the guy. Do you think he's uh, going to be the most uh, toughest fight of your career? I mean, I know you say you're looking to stop him, but I mean, do you do you expect him to be the toughest? Look, I told my promoter, it's unfortunate that we do not have um, um, a tournament on our stable this, this year because of the up and down and uh, uh, politics of boxing SA. I wanted Keegan because I felt like I want, I, I can beat Keegan. And, and Keegan, after the fight, he did shake my hand and say, champ, yeah, I think the referee gave me one day, so we must do it again. Keegan is the fight I want, and that is in light heavyweight. It's not in cruiserweight, it's not in, in cashweight. I think in light heavyweight, that's where I'm, I'm stronger. So, Keegan, look, I can only judge after the fight if it was, it's going to be, uh, be my toughest fight. On paper, it is. On paper, it is. I'm not sure how it's going to translate in, inside the ring. Okay. All right. So, I mean, on paper, you're right. I mean, he's, his record is a positive record, if you put it that way. So, he's got a lot more wins than he has losses. Um, how do you think he's going to approach this fight to you? Do you think he, he will come in with a different game plan? I know you mentioned that he probably won't change, but do you think that there's something that they're working on for you, like specifically? Yeah, yeah. They're working on the jab. <laughs> they're working on the double jab. They're working, you know, we've got, we've got insight in the camp. There's nothing they can hide from us. 
they're working on the jab, they're trying to come at us. And that's what we, when we got that inside, we were very happy. We we're very happy. And that's why I'm not hiding that I will be countering every nonsense that he comes with me. And very fast, I'll make him pull, pull his punches away from me. I will make him keep his hands on him very fast. And I will stop him probably the second and third round. Because uh, what I'm aiming for is, is for a boxing lesson. So for a boxing lesson to happen, I don't. Uh, if the if the opportunity comes for me to knock him out in the first round, I'll take it. But in my head, I'm imagining me me outboxing him first round, then stopping him second and third. Okay. And then you you said that your intention is to for the for the majority of your career from this point onwards would be to campaign at the light heavyweights. Um, what do you make as of the light heavyweight division? Because in South Africa, there's not that many contenders in the division. So you kind of sometimes have to take what you can get. Yes, yes. And um, my promoter did say, because I fought my first fight against Rodriguez. Um, I think the younger brother, he was still a cruiserweight that time with one, uh, less than one week, like four days not notice. And um, my second fight was against a Congolese guy where I knocked him out. It was in cruiserweight. Those two fights were in cruiserweight. So um, Keegan was our first fight at light heavyweight. So I struggled a lot with, with the weight cutting and all of that, and you know, still learning from the game. And um, and then the guy caught me on the short rib. <laughs> I couldn't stand. So I I I, I immediately the referee saw that I was still fighting on. Then the referee white wire waved it off on my feet, where I felt like I was still you know there was a few seconds left. So light heavyweight, I think it's I'll, uh, after this fight, I'll be going back there and, you know, going for the heads, going for the heads. But Keegan is the, Keegan is the, is the main focus. If I don't get him the next fight, I'll get him the fight after that because I believe he's one of the, one of the better boxers in that division. Well, you, on your career where you have to kick on, you have to start uh, building up those wins if you are to make a serious uh, dent in, this, uh, in the division. Um, do you anticipate it starting? On yes, yes. I mean, like you said, the, 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 the light division, the light heavyweight division is not really that, that, that deep. So two, three wins in that division should get you a title fight, um, especially with a guy like me, the guy who can talk, the guy who can sell fights. The guy who can make things happen. I think I'll be going for the champ, and I think I'll be a very entertaining um, um, fight for the champ after two or three wins um, uh, in that division. Starting from this, uh, from next week Friday. Next week Friday, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, honestly speaking, <laughs> I'm levels above this guy. I know the records doesn't show it, but I'm levels above this guy, technique wise, IQ wise. I'm just, I'm, I'm so relaxed. I, I want the guy to be angry. I want him to come at me. I want to feel his power. I want to feel it. And, and you know, people think that um, because of my body shape and his body shape that he's bigger, you will see on the way when I stand next to him, I am the bigger boxer. I am the bigger boxer. I might, I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll even go as far as saying I, I think I'm the stronger guy. So when he feels my punches, I promise you, his game, his game is going to change. And when I feel his punches, it's going to motivate me to even do more. What is your message to the people of Cape Town that are anticipating your arrival very soon? First of all, in Cape Town, Joshua Organization, which is my main sponsor in, um, I was, was my main partner in, 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 in my boxing career. I mean, these people have bought me sport gear. Uh, my, my fighting attire is being bought by them. So many things that they're sponsoring me with, if, especially for this fight coming. You know, I'd like to say to, um, um, to, to the owner that I appreciate his support so much. To the people of Cape Town, um, Francisco, my family in Cape Town, my people, my friends in Cape Town, I'm aiming for fight of the night. Anything less than that, I'll be very disappointed. I'm aiming to be the top of the town the following week. I'm aiming to entertain you guys. You know, like I said, I'm working with guys like Nkrumo. You know, you can imagine how the camp is, you know, uh, in terms of skill. And Nkrumo has taught me so much in terms of 
uh, entertainment, how to run, how, how to behave in the ring, how to entertain people, but as well as getting the job done in the ring. So the, the Cape Town people, when I look at their, or their, the type of boxing that they see, they always see jab, jab, uh, jab streets, jab red, no entertainment, nothing, there's nothing going on in Cape Town. So I'm there to come and show them the real entertainment of the boxing industry. All right. Well, we look forward to, to you putting on a show. There, obviously, a showman is always, uh, as long as he gets the results, is always a good thing to, to watch. Yeah. And uh, you're promising to get the results uh, come fight night. Um, is there anything last you want to say? Because I don't anticipate this being our last interview. Yes, uh, hopefully we'll have an interview after the fight. Um, look, uh, my last words will be, uh, again, I want to thank uh, you, uh, for the type of work that you are doing. It's a great job, you know, many people are looking up to you. And us as fighters, man, you are, you are, you are our last hope, man, of getting our voice out there. So keep doing what you're doing. And I want to thank my promoter, Mr. Lebu Mahoko, my sponsor, my sponsors, all of the guys, the family members who are taking out their 100 grand, the 200 grand, and my main sponsor, Joshua Organization, Mr. Francisco Sosanto. I thank you so much for helping me. My promoter, like I said, it's going to be a boxing lesson. So I thank you. I thank my, my, my sparring partners, Dream Team. I thank you guys so much. Everyone I'm working with, I thank you guys for being on my side and believing on me. And I thank the Northern Cape for always having my back. It's going to be a boxing lesson. So without talking too much, man, I'm ready for it. I thought it was this week, so I'm disappointed it's next week. So I have to wait again. Yeah.